Star Wars director George Lucas pulled inspiration from a ton of both real-world and fictional stories. From King Arthur to Samurai Warriors, to The Hobbit, to World War II, to Dune, many of these correlations are quite direct, like planet-sized spaceships from the science fiction works of E.E. E. Smith, humanoids from Metropolis, and fight scenes from the Japanese adventure movie The Hidden Fortress. But according to Lucas, one story had more influence than any other. Here's George Lucas in a 1995 interview with Leonard Moulton for a VHS by 20th Century Fox. The original impetus for the whole thing was, I used to watch a, a, a serial on television called Adventure Theater, and they had uh, Flash Gordon, Conquest of the Universe on it. This 1940 movie inspired so much of what became synonymous with Star Wars. The hairstyles, wipes, cloud cities, an evil emperor, and yes, the iconic crawl. But how did it get from this to this? And just what makes the Star Wars intro so brilliant? The Star Wars crawl is simple, but its scale is cinematic. When Star Wars hit theaters in 1977, audiences rose to their feet, cheering in unfiltered excitement. Over the next 42 years, each of the nine following trilogy films led with the same legendary sequence. The crawl is so beloved that anthology films like Rogue One and Solo were met with criticism for not including it. While producing Star Wars, Lucas was faced with a challenge. He wanted to replicate the idea that you've just walked in in the middle of a six part, 10 part serial, whatever, you haven't seen the first few episodes and here's the crawl that will catch you up on everything you need to know. How do you give the viewer background on an entire universe and its history? For a solution, he looked to the shows and movies of his childhood. These shows like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers relied on textual context to set the scene. So that seems like an easy solution. The problem is they aren't necessarily the most engaging. But Lucas knew he could master the technique. The director always had a knack for creative visual editing. Here's a scene from his student film, Look at Life. The one minute collage won award after award and ultimately changed film editing forever. In 1976, just one year before the release of Star Wars, Lucas invited famed title sequence designer Dan Perry to come work with him in California. Perry already had quite the resume. He created the intro sequences for The Exorcist, Taxi Driver, and Close Encounters of the Third Kind. After struggling to apply a modern take on Lucas's Flash Gordon inspiration, Perry stumbled upon a 1939 Western movie titled Union Pacific. I saw this motion of the titles rolling away from you into space towards a horizon line. So George liked that, he said in a 2017 interview with Art of the Title. But one thing George never liked was Perry's logo proposals. He eventually chose the work of designer Susie Rice. With the format and logo in place, all Lucas had to do was apply his text. But that too turned out to be complicated. The crawl is such a hard thing because you have to be careful that you're not using too many words that people don't understand. It's like a poem. Despite how skilled Lucas was in post-production, he isn't quite known for his script writing. Harrison Ford once stated, you can type this shit, George, but you sure can't say it. The original crawl was going to be, I think, almost twice as long. Uh, and it was twice as long in the, in the early version that he screened. In February 1977, Lucas screened a cut for select members of the crew. Among them was screenwriter Brian De Palma. According to Lucas, De Palma threw his hands in the air and said, George, you're out of your mind. Let me sit down and write this for you. It was, it was a terrible piece of writing. And if you look at them side by side, Brian De Palma and uh, Jay Cox of Time Magazine both sat down the next day at the typewriter. They banged out three paragraphs. Uh, they, they basically cut the crawl in half. And, and that is the crawl that you see today. But the project wasn't done quite yet. 
the technology to superimpose this text on screen with computers was limited. So instead, the crew shot it manually. They laid out two by six foot models on the floor and moved the camera over the models to simulate the crawl. Of course, this had to be repeated with other languages. So here it is, the completed Star Wars crawl. Of course, the Star Wars crawl could never be complete without John Williams. In general, music is among the very last things to be contributed to uh, films. I'm Frank Lehman, and I'm an assistant professor of music at Tufts University, and I specialize in film music. The iconic Star Wars main title was not created specifically for the crawl. It was originally the theme for Luke Skywalker, but Williams did adapt the score to match the intro's pacing. You start off with this blare of B-flat major and the entire orchestra just blasting it at your ears. And then there's a, a, a short sort of connected passage. And then you get the bum 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 And that's the main theme, that's the earworm, that's the thing that Williams wants to sort of implant in your brain. And then dying away as the camera pans away. You hear a much more amorphous sort of cosmic music, the, the harmony becomes ambiguous, the instrumentation gets stripped down, um, and that's where the unique music for every film starts. And so the crawl was finally complete. A masterful combination of poetry, typography, music, and cinematography. The original 1977 crawl was overshadowed by the groundbreaking effects and awe-inspiring visuals of the first film, but it does still endure as the recurring doorway to the Star Wars universe. Of course, it's been updated since. The yellow font has been saturated, subtitles have been added, and no longer is it made by dragging a camera over panels of text. But the fact that it's been included in each of the trilogy films speaks to its enduring success. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Let us know if you'd like to see more movie content on Cheddar. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and click that notification bell. See you next time.